Hi everyone, welcome back to the Strong with Julie podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Victoria. She is the manager of the St. Pete Girls Walk and she manages all of the marketing, the social media. She is my biggest helper ever <laughs> and she's helped the club just grow so much more than I could ever imagine. Anyways, let me let her introduce herself because I could talk about you all day. But yeah, tell them about how you got to Florida, your upbringing, all the things. Hi everyone, I'm Victoria and I met Julie in September, yeah. like a month after she had started the walking group. We met at a coffee shop, I just went up to her after a walk and asked if I could help um, do marketing and the Canva and event planning and um, I grew up in the DC area, I guess. Fun fact, I used to live in Hawaii for almost three years. Super fun fact. Tell them a little bit about what brought you to Hawaii from D.C. Yeah, so I got a new job and they let me pick from 18 locations. Um, I think normally they just give you the location you're like closest to. For me, would have been D.C. But I specifically told them when I applied to the job that I didn't want to stay in D.C. So I got to pick. um, There was tons of places like Atlanta, Alaska, Puerto Rico, California, Miami. um, But I picked... Hawaii. Honolulu. <laughs> yeah, Honolulu. Um, and I lived like right in Waikiki. I had like an ocean view apartment. That's so cool. I didn't have an ocean view when I first moved there. Um, yeah. But I got it after like three months. But uh, I picked Hawaii and I left my dog behind because you can't bring puppies. Um, they have to, I mean, you can bring <laughs> the puppies, but you have to um, fill out paperwork. It takes like two to four months. And I only had 12 days to get to Hawaii when I got offered the job. So. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that either. Yeah, cool. I took like three suitcases. Wow. And I didn't, it's crazy when I flew there, I didn't even have a place to sleep that night. Um, my mom helped me move there. We flew there. And then while we were on the plane, my dad found us a hotel and he booked it for like two nights because I didn't have a place to live or a car. And I didn't know anyone. So Did like, you get your Jeep there? I did. Yeah. I had two so Jeeps cool. in Hawaii. I actually had three cars in Hawaii. I had like a little island really? car. Yeah, I had like a little island car that was this like 2001 little like, I call it a drug dealer car, but <laughs> everyone drives this in Hawaii. And then I upgraded to like a two-door Jeep Wrangler, but I call it like an island Jeep. An island car is just like a really old car that's like only been on the island. It doesn't have a lot of miles though because the island's not very big, but um, they're pretty old. And then... I upgraded again to a four-door Jeep Wrangler. And at one point I had both Jeeps and I would like rent them out on Turo, like both of the That's Jeeps. That's so smart. She's so business <laughs> mindset oriented. Like how, how smart is that? I know. To do that in Hawaii. Like you yeah. probably made bank. <laughs> I did. And I also had like a little mask business. I would like buy masks from this lady. They were like handmade Hawaiian masks. And then I'd ship them to the mainland because there was like a huge shortage of masks. Wow. Um, and they were like, Hawaiian printed and then I um, I'm from Virginia so I like picked the colleges on um, like JMU Virginia Tech and UVA theme colors but they were like Hawaiian printed Ooh. I have to show you a picture and then sold those so it was really cool cool okay so I'm going to Hawaii in a week and a half which is kind of mm-hmm. wild that I'm so not prepared for it and like I should yeah. probably start thinking about it but I'm so excited and I'm going to Honolulu, so like where you were. Tell us like maybe two or three of your favorite things about Hawaii that you just don't get in the US. Yeah, all right, um, definitely the sunsets, they're amazing. Um, Better than Florida? Yeah. Florida sunsets are pretty dope. Yeah, they're yeah. like amazing. Like you don't even need a filter when you take the picture, but not every sunset is good in my opinion like once you live in Hawaii like sometimes you'll be like wow it's a really good sunset tonight and then other days I would be like oh it's not that good tonight but like Um, everyone always watches the sunsets because they're not pretty Uh, but you can get these pancakes that are like turtle shaped pancakes yeah it's like a pancake that they like make into a turtle with like whipped cream and um fruit it's near Diamond Head in Waikiki at this place called Cafe Moray um, so you really... should definitely go. I like before I moved to Hawaii, went on Instagram and was like searching all these places, and I found them. And then I went. Um, I went a few times when I was in Hawaii. It was really cool. That sounds right up my alley. I know. And Sunsets then, and pancakes. My <laughs> other favorite thing was on the west side. Um, 
of the island. It's called Electric Beach. You can go snorkeling and you can also scuba dive there. But they have wild dolphins that come wild? swim with you. Oh, oh, you yeah. can just like grab on and go. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Take me. You can't grab them, but they will come up and swim up next to you, and you can get pictures with them. There's like a oh, hundred of them. Wow. They come in like a pack. That is so cool. I'm so excited for my trip, and like talking to you about how you live there makes me like ten times more excited about it. When you're like telling me, you're like, oh, I wish you could come. I'm like, oh, I want to come. We, she might still come. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. Six days is like not enough for me, but it's a long flight. I know. It's so f- probably it's thirteen hours. Thirteen hours in the air from the east coast. Yeah, but like traveling, it's like twenty-two three hour layover. Yeah, and then like. Yeah, it's, it's just as a whole yeah. day. I used to, have, like, at one point, my work paid me from my... Well, when I first moved there, work paid me from, like, flying from D.C. to Hawaii. So I had to, like, track the time. And it was, like, oh, 23 wow. hours of traveling. So they, like, paid me 23 hours from, like, leaving my D.C. house to, like, my Hawaii hotel. See, I could get, get with that. Yeah. <laughs> but they actually didn't provide relocation assistance. No? Um, and that was like part of the deal. Like I could go wherever I wanted, but they didn't pay relocation assist- assistance. But I was like, who gets offered a job in Hawaii? Yeah. And it was only three months, but yeah. it ended up being almost three years. Do you want to talk a little bit about like how you found your passion, your job in yeah. college and why you chose that job specifically? It's very unique and I think it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess actually... In college, I also had a business, which kind of distracted me from my um, public health career for a few years, Um, but I completely stopped doing the t-shirt business I had when I moved to Hawaii just to focus on my degree um, in public health and just infectious diseases was something I was always passionate about, but I didn't even know anything about epidemiology. Um, It's like the study of epidemics. Yeah. Until I was a senior in high school, my physical therapist told me about it because I was telling her that I wanted to do something in the medical field, but I didn't want to go to med school. And then nursing, in my opinion, when I was younger, they didn't get paid enough for the amount of work they do. I know now nurses like make so much money. Do they? Um, especially that. during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, I had some friends in Hawaii. They were on the COVID unit and they made like ten thousand a week. Wow. But like. Oh, but like scary job yeah. and they were quarantined like so they were quarantined so like they there's a bus that picked them up they went to work all day in the covid icu they had like masks and everything That's and scary. then the bus drove them back and mm-hmm. they got food like delivered to their apartment like because they were exposed to covid all day so they can't yeah that's scary so they Did like, any of them get sick a lot um the girl i know didn't get sick at all but like wow you couldn't do anything. Yeah. But she did it for three months, so she made bank, and then yeah. she's like, "Can't I can't do it again? I'm too tired." But yeah. I would back, be exhausted. <laughs> back to how I got into my career. So, um, found out about that um, public health and epidemiology, and I always liked infectious diseases, and then went to college and was first a bio major, and then shortly switched to public health. But I then transferred colleges, so I went to like a small school, Elon, and was studying. I didn't know you went to Elon. Yeah, I thought you knew that. No. That was your first school? Yeah. Yeah. I went there for a year, and so I was like public health um, major there, Mm -hmm. and then I transferred to Virginia Tech, and they didn't have public health, so I did the closest thing, which was human development, and then just happened to be that my um advisor was creating like a public health major so he gave me like the check sheet for that major and I took all those classes under my major and then um I graduated in May 2018 so that fall 2018 the major was available to start with so I could have like petitioned to be the first one to graduate with it but it was like so much paperwork I was like I don't care yeah um so I still tell people like I studied public health but like I majored in human development technically yeah technically but it's like whatever yeah but after college there was like no jobs available in public health that were like twelve dollars an hour and I had like graduated from college living in the DC area that wasn't like I wasn't able to live off of that so I just decided to go work um as a programs coordinator at random company in the DC area and then I was looking for a new job and Remember, I saw, like, the 
government was hiring for some people for the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And I found the job in January or for February. Hawaii. Yeah, okay. I didn't know, I actually didn't even know Hawaii was on the list because I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to get this job. So I didn't even read the <laughs> like, options of yeah. where you could move. Wow. And so I applied and then they called me right away and I got my offer letter. I remember I got my offer letter on like February 10th because 10 is my lucky number. Oh, so yeah. I just remember that. We were just talking about that. Yeah. yeah. And then I moved to Hawaii like 12 days after that. So I think my first day in Hawaii was like February 22nd. Yeah. But just to put it into perspective, that was in 2020. We didn't like go into lockdown until March 16th or 13th. Yeah. So I was there a whole month before and they had been hiring in January. So like it only takes two months for an infectious disease to spread around the world. That's wild. So it was crazy. Okay, yeah. I When I got the job, my mom told me, she was like, don't tell anyone you're moving there because, okay. um, yeah, COVID is, like, going to blow over maybe, and then you won't have a job, and you're telling everyone you're moving to Hawaii, so, like, wait. And I'm like, what? And it lasts in. I already signed my contract. Out, yeah. yeah, I was like, I already signed my contract. I'm going. Yeah. But she didn't have, she was like, this sounds so sketchy. Really? But it ended up being, like, a really cool experience, and so Another fun fact is you were only supposed to be there for three months, right? Yeah. But you ended up being there for three years. Almost three years, yeah. Wow. And then um, after COVID ended, like, the funding ended, so everyone, like, um, job ended. It was just, like, a short-term thing. Yeah. Short-term, but it was, like, three years. So I came back to the East Coast for a new job, and, um, yeah, it was crazy. It was really hard to leave afterwards. It it's still like hard sometimes like yeah. that's why you're like oh, i want to come to hawaii you're like, like oh yeah. yeah i do but like i don't six days is like not even enough you could come with me and then stay a little longer yeah or like we could extend the trip and just Ooh, do us that'd be so fun right i still have some friends that live there you do yeah okay maybe we'll talk about it after the podcast because like for me my thing is like traveling alone is so scary oh, and yeah. that that flight like that just makes me worried but also like I would love to have like a friend there with yeah. me to like Ooh. experience it. We could do a bunch of like cool um, posts. Yeah, in reels. Like, we could go to Hawaii Girls Who Walk. There is one. There, yeah, we could go. It's like Honolulu Girls Who Walk or something. That'd be so cool. Okay, let's talk about when you first discovered just the Girls Who Walk in general, the the mass clubs around the United States. You were in D.C., right? Yeah, I was in D.C. and I was Gus. Oh, he's sleeping. Um, I had seen them on like TikTok, but didn't know DC had one. So I was like asking my friends, like, "Hey, want to start a walking group?" And then they told me there was the DC walking group. Yeah. So I did that, and then I was visiting St. Pete one weekend, and I went to your walk. I didn't know you at all. It was like September, and was you saw like, it on the Instagram, right? Yeah. And then I was like, "Oh, do you need help like with social media? Like, I love event planning." <laughs> After the walk, she came up to me at, I think we were at Green and Berry. No, it was like some random one we never no? went to again. Crow, Black Crow. Or oh, something. yeah, yeah. And she came up to me after and I was like, yes. <laughs> we'll get into why it was overwhelming me at first, but it was really helpful. Yeah, so um, I was just like, let me help. I love like doing marketing. I've thought about like switching my career into like marketing or doing consulting. Um, I'm kind of doing that anyway, slowly but surely. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, I love the public health field, but yeah. Well, I think it's nice that you have your your day job kind of, but then you also have like a fun passion project on the side. I feel like if if maybe in that it, that moment in your life, if your actual job isn't like fulfilling that passion, to find it somewhere else like is. It's good yeah. and it's more filling too. Yeah, you know, it's good to have a backup plan because, like, in public health, everything runs on funding. So yeah. even like my current job has like a, a time, like yeah, a expiration date. date. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It like when I was working at Gardner, I was working like eight to five, but it definitely wasn't fulfilling my passion. So like I had my coaching on the side, but then it comes to a point where maybe your passion will outweigh 
your other job yeah. so then you could like take it full time which is cool um but yeah for now like you like the two and you're you're grinding and you're doing really good um let's tell them about the st pete girls who walk story and then afterwards you guys had some questions on how to start a club where you're living or how to join a club where to find them um so we could definitely go through that too uh but start of the club it started in august of 2023 a week before I moved to St. Pete, I was living in Fort Myers and I made the Instagram and I was like, you know what? I am craving some community. I'm craving some in-person meetups with my followers, my clients, just people. And I'm moving to a new place and I want to make friends. And I live lived in Connecticut before that. So I knew about City Girls Who Walk, which I think was the first one ever yeah, made. Yeah, the New York one. Yeah, and then I didn't realize, I thought there was only one, but then I started looking up Girls Who Walk and I realized there's so many in different places. So when I knew I was moving to Clearwater St. Pete area, I looked up St. Pete Girls Who Walk and I couldn't find a club. I actually found a hot girl walk of St. Pete. Oh yeah, yeah. but the girl moved, I think. The girl moved, they, were, they hadn't posted in months and I DM'd them and I guess it just like, paused but the cool thing about it was like i dm'd her and i tried to figure out if like they were continuing it but some of her followers followed me and then we got talking and like they said oh our leader had moved but like would love to you know help you or orchestrate or join this club if you wanted to start St. Pete girls walk so that's what i ended up doing made the instagram a week before fall went to the explore page and typed in st pete as a location and then went to coffee shops boutiques hairdressers oh the hairdressers always know yeah the hairdressers and there was like one more i think it was just honestly like some little restaurants and i went to those four locations and looked at their followers and like followed them followed their followers and then i posted that there was going to be a walk the following sunday and just prayed that at least one person showed up i was like hey guys i'm gonna be here in this location at st Pete pier someone show up and walk with me maybe and was there, there a walk color for the first walk white white okay yeah because yeah, i remember when i saw you guys in the coloring i was like oh that's really cool and then um there's like an admin page for all the like walk people and i posted in there before that we do like color days but i haven't seen like anyone else really do no well actually fredericksburg who walk um liz yeah well she started from st pete so that's yeah why so she, she does the that. colors yeah. but i think the colors is fun yeah my initial intention about the colors was if I was going to join a club and go to some random place and meet people, the scariest part is just walking in and not knowing who the heck is in the club. Yeah. So at least if we have a color scheme going, like if you walk in and see like four girls wearing white, pink, or blue, or like whatever the color is, then you know. Yeah. You know? So that's my intention about it. It was more like a comfort thing, but it is pretty cool like you know, 50, 60 girls just like walking on the street with yeah. the same color on. We get a lot of like, what are you guys protesting? And we're like, we're just walking. <laughs> yeah, I did hear, I'm, I don't go to all of the walks, but I heard from one of the girls that they were wearing all black and yeah. a guy said, are you doing a funeral bar, bar crawl? And I'm like, what's a funeral bar funeral crawl? Bar <laughs> Okay, but kind that, of sounds fun. <laughs> that would only happen in St. Pete. <laughs> I know. I was like, well, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. No, that's super interesting. Um, what? Which walk has been your favorite? I think my favorite walk was the first walk my mom and my aunt Shirley and the two girls went to. Aww. It was a super big walk, and we did that really pretty walk um, in Lenoy, Lenoy Park. Whatever. I wasn't there. Vinoy? Vinoy, yeah, the not Illinois. Yeah, we did that walk, and then we did a little bit of the neighborhood, and then we also did the pier. It was like a longer one, and the girls had so much fun, and like a lot of, uh, there was like some kids there too, oh. so it was cute like to see I know. Walking. Recently, we've been experimenting with different times, yeah. and we have like seen a huge drop in attendance. Yeah. Huge. Oh, we can talk about that. So we used to always do Sunday at 10 a.m. for our walks which we might go back to, but the month of April, we decided to experiment because we've gotten people asking for 7 a.m., people asking for 9.30, people asking for 11.30. I have church service at uh, 9.30, or depends on the time, but it always overlapped with the 10.30 because it's like 9.30 or 11.30, so either way, I couldn't make it. Um, so this month, we decided to experiment with it, and if you are going to create your own club, you'll definitely notice that it's really hard to please everyone. So what we decided was let's try out a bunch of different times in April and then see what people like best. And what we found is 
I think the happy medium might be 10 o'clock, but a lot of people like Saturday walks too. So we're trying to figure it out and we just realized that it doesn't have to be the same every single week. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people express they like Saturday walks and then like not Don't very show many up. people showed up. I yeah. saw from the photos. So. Yeah. Was it at a, like some sort of weekend? Like, oh, was it after First Friday? I don't know. So First Friday in St. Pete is like a, a day where everyone goes out, really. I've like never been First Friday. Every, first Friday. It, the bars are packed. Brett and I went a few times. We haven't been out in so long, but when we first moved here, we used to go, and you'd think there was like a parade going on or something. It, and then <laughs> they shut the street, and there's like concerts in the street. Yeah. Um, fun fact, Safety Harbor up here yeah. has, instead of First Friday, Third Friday, Ooh. and they do the same thing, but it's more family-oriented. So we went with our neighbors last weekend, and there, um, there's like little people like selling little knickknacks on the street, and it, it stops at 10 o'clock. And I'm like, wait, this is perfect, because so now I can like be in bed and wake up at a decent hour. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Whereas in First Friday in St. Pete, you're going to bed at like 2 a.m. I have to go sometime. Yeah, no, it's fun. Okay, cool. We went on a tangent, but let's talk about some tips of girls that want to start a club in their area. You got some tips for them? Yeah, I mean, I would say um, create the Instagram right away. Even if you don't know the name, um, just getting the Instagram created. And then you can always post like a coming soon or like an yeah. intro photo. I remember uh, when Liz was creating her Instagram, I helped her. And she just put like a random photo um, in her icon and then it was really cool when she started she like had four options and she let her followers pick which Icon they liked for their like logo group, logo. Oh, yeah. for the logo. That's cool. Um, I made the logo on Canva. Yeah, this is a new logo though, right? Yeah, this these are our shirts this one this one is from um, Who created this? Danielle. Danielle. We had a um, design contest yeah. So Danielle won and we, we did this design for sweatshirts and um, tank tops, which is so cute. And we have like hats and bags coming, which is fun. Um, and yeah. Yeah. So far it's all been uh, like volunteer too. Like we don't get money from this. We just do it for fun and free and like for people to make friendships. But definitely in the future, like if we wanted to have like free stuff to give out to people, we could think about that. But I think when you're first starting out to make a club, you know, like you kind of want it to be free. You want it to be welcoming. You want people to like come in and not have to like pay $5 to go on a walk, you know? Yeah. And I think too, you have to remember like what your vision is for the club. Yeah. Cause like, what are your values? Yeah. Like Julie liked to start the club and have a consistent walk every Sunday or every weekend. And then, um, built off that yeah and you want to make your like your thing is you wanted to bring people together for free so like we've had people that want to partner and like charge our members like a membership fee but that's not like part of our vision it's not part of our vision or our values so usually we'll decline it depends like we've done workout classes if what we want to do is the partnerships that we're making even with the workout classes, we understand that an instructor can't just like give up an hour of their day, but we get a significant discount for bringing that many girls in. So then we'll we'll offer that. We'll offer things like that. So a typical class, let's say Pilates is thirty dollars. They give it to us for ten dollars. That's very nice and kind, and we'll offer that to people. Um, and we understand like something like that. But if we're running it, um, we're not charging. Yeah. What we'll do is only partner with coffee shops that give our girls a discount or like offer something. Uh, one of my favorites, I think it's Green and Berry or Raining Berries, and they have the cookies. It's Raining Berries. Raining Berries, yeah. And one of the walks, they cut, chopped up uh, cookie samples, and it was so good. Oh, was I wasn't cute. there for that one, but they do have really good cookies. I heard they sell them at the Rowdy's Stadium. I had one last Sunday. Me and Shelby saw it. It was so good. Um, okay, let's talk about... Um, just different things that people can post on their Instagrams if they're starting a club to get the community involved. Okay, we should also talk about how we get those discounts. Oh yeah, you wanna do that first? Sure. Okay. I mean, there's nothing like secret about it. We literally <laughs> just messaged the coffee shop telling them about our group and then I send like a group photo normally from like a recent walk and ask them if they want to do a walk with us and then that the people we partner with give anywhere from 10 to 50% discount and they do the same. Yeah. Um, but now I think we're going to up it to 20%.
20 to like 30 percent discount um okay if you guys hear gus he's playing with his bell but um another thing about the partnerships is we want to let them know before we go to the coffee shop i didn't do this in the beginning because we were so small but we let them know before so that they have enough employees there to help you know the amount of girls that we're gonna have show up yeah so that's we helpful. we have like 50 to 75 girls and so it's kind of crazy. Within 30 minutes, there's like 30 girls ordering coffee. They, they gotta be quick, yeah. So we make sure that they have capacity. Another great thing is we make sure that people show up early enough for to get their coffee. Yeah. Sorry, Gus is pulling me. Um, and then they can also get like food and stay out, stay afterwards. Like we yeah. had brunch afterwards at Raining Berries last week. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. But oh, no, Raining Berry. I just keep getting them. The, one of the berries. Like, one of the berries. We like um, those. <laughs> but like sometimes we have girls that get in the coffee line. Um, sometimes when it's like about to leave, we're about to leave. So we'll just tell everyone like at like 9.45 or 9.50 that if you get in the line now, like you're not going to get your coffee in time. Yeah. Because we leave like right at 10. I mean, we 10 stay at 10.05, but... Depends yeah. on the walk. Yeah, we'll try to like give it a five minute buffer and peop if people DM us like, oh, we're running late, I'll usually just send them my location so they can catch yeah. up. Um, because we want to get in and out of the coffee shop as quick as possible because there's other customers that, that we want to be mindful of. Yeah, and a lot of girls come to the walk and then they like go do other things and we only have from 10 to 11 to walk. So we yeah. try to like stay on that schedule. Yeah. What about the walking like routes? Like, how do you? Oh, walking routes. <laughs> so in the beginning, I would go and like actually do the routes and time them. But now I feel like I know St. Pete pretty well to work, and like other girls know the walks well. We'll just like start at the coffee shop and do a loop. So whatever that loop looks like, if it's at one certain place, it's kind of like a straight line, and we walk the um, central. So it's kind of like around shops and brunches and restaurants. So then it's nice because people can like look at different places and window shop and like then afterwards go there afterwards, you know? Yeah. Which is nice. Then for that one, since it's a straight line down the street, we'll do 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And then other ones, we loop the pier and it ends up being 30 minutes. And you, we always start um, where we stop, right? Yeah, we always stop where we start. And then new member Monday. He's biting just, me again. Just stop biting it, her. Ow. Okay, new member Monday. Guys, stop it. New member Monday is something that we started posting that really helped grow our community, I think, on the Instagram. So as much as you can post on the community page and show off like the different um, things that you've been doing, the different events, the different, um, even outside of the official events the unofficial events will tell girls in the group me like take pictures send it to us like we want to see enjoy and so that's been really nice and then yeah just the group me being able to like have different categories of group chats so like girls are networking we got a book club we have like different happy hours for girls to go to so yeah it's been really fun growing it and like I really enjoyed doing it with you and we're growing our team we just yeah. um have another volunteer shanty that's helping us now too so it's been great. 